So part of the reason why we don't give out or why I ask the, the, the team not to give out names is because sometimes in our heads, we believe that there's certain things that we do that we believe are our gifts. But if it's not on there, it's because you have not let people or people don't perceive you in that way. So whatever you <coughs> might think is your gift, or maybe it is, maybe it's not, you're not demonstrating it enough to say, hey, I think that's his gift. So we don't want you getting mad at anyone and saying, why didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> right? Or just stop what you're doing. No more giving. <laughs> so that's part of the reason why I didn't want any names given out. I'm sure at some point you're all going to tell each other, well, I had you and I had. I suggest you don't because that, some people are going to get upset. So, yeah, so. But I would argue that the people that know you best and that took it for you would know best and like match it. Well, we or did. Or we try to match it up with someone that. We thought know you best, and someone that not so much, but that's how you are perceived to that person. And it's amongst you guys, and you guys hang around you guys more than anyone else. And like some of the questions, though, for some of the kids were very like personal. Nope. So it was almost like even if you knew the person, you didn't necessarily know because it's so personal. For instance, how many times a day do they read the Bible? Yeah. I don't know. I'm not, you know, we can't see that, but we can see that obviously the other gifts, so therefore. We yes, see that. but at the same time, I can tell how much Bible you know. Right? Right, okay. So there's that. And then, like, in the giving one, like, for your, like, how much you give your, your that, your, um, your tithes and offering and things like that. That yeah. one was one that I, like, it's almost hard to, like, discern. Yeah. There's, um, but one that I found was like the, I don't know, if it, like the prophecy. I think the specific, especially because like when we took it, like um, after it was, I think it was, we took, well for us, we took it. And then like the week after, Jerson gave his lesson on it. Mm -hmm. And it was so interesting to see what it was. like how that kind of goes in hand with like the culture, you know, yeah. especially in the church. So okay. I thought it was really interesting. Right. So, and yes, so there are some questions that, tend to be pretty personal and that the other individual wouldn't know. But a lot of the questions you would really know about the person. That's the way that you perceive that individual, right? <coughs> if, let's say, Josh, let's just use, I'll just use Josh. If Josh believes that he is a person who exhorts other people, and then the person who took the test didn't give him anything on the exhortation, <laughs> then you've never exhorted that person. That's just how it is. And we are we to just exhort who we want to exhort? Or are we to exhort all those who walk through our doors? What is exhort? <laughs> <laughs> to, encourage. To, to encourage, to lift up. You you tend to do that a lot with the people you know, right? So, so that's the thing. So we don't give out names because we don't want you to get mad at anyone. But if you should be mad at anyone, if you're going to be mad at anyone, be mad at yourself. Because that's the way that the person perceives you. Oh, you allowed yourself... To be perceived by that person, <laughs> like whether it's fair or not, okay, we, I mean, we can have a long conversation about it, right? But in general, that's kind of how it is, okay. Now, a lot of, of a lot of you were, were were surprised, right? A lot of you were surprised, like, why is this here, right? Anyone? Yeah, administration. I was like, what? Yeah, which, I, I, I question the same one, right? I, I, I question it for you as well. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> Anyone else have one that like, I this is not me. Pastoring. Pastoring. Yeah. I, I, that's one I need to touch on. And, and the other one that you're surprised at, or you're like, this probably shouldn't be here. Anyone? Yeah. Okay. All right. When we think pastor, okay, <coughs> we look at it in our, um, obviously, our, our culture context. When we say pastor, we say, oh, pastor. Oh, you mean person who stands in the front preaches to the whole church in a sense that is not exactly what a pastor is um, our church has a pastor right me but then our church also has what you call sub pastors you know our, our churches in general our, our, our churches our lingo our, 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 our vernacular has never been to use the word pastor other than when talking to about one individual 
That's just how our churches have been in general. When we think pastor, we think leader of the church in the front. If I were to say, and this, let's see, let's see. If I were to say your youth pastor is Rob, some of you would be like, okay, but others of you would be like, mm, that sounds kind of weird. Because we don't use those terms. But technically, <coughs> Rob is your youth pastor. You don't like to be called that, but yeah. Right. Because he's also not used to that type of label. So a pastor isn't necessarily the individual who stands in the front and leads the church. Okay, a, a pastor could be the one who is in charge of a <coughs> subset group or someone who likes to teach, who likes to teach a certain amount of group or is in charge of a small, uh, a small group. Your dads could be pastors in the home. That's who you look up to. That's who, who you, you get your word from, who you get your faith from. Okay, each individual minister here has what you would call it, like in, in a broad term, a pastor, a leader of that individual ministry that leads that subset, who is in charge of that subset, who is in charge or has a heart for that group. The kids ministry, right? I, I told you guys, I'm not good with the kids like at all. Okay? And some of you like have that gift that you like working with kids, which I am amazed at. I, I would never, ever, That's ever, <laughs> ever lead a kids ministry i just won't don't you work with kids i do but i mean like the little ones that that can't understand what i'm saying like that group that just runs around i just i i'll, I'll, I'll choke one of them i do it i really think i would so but it's amazing to see someone who has a heart to take care of these kids and like really want to teach them to that's that's kind of, that's a pastor that's someone who has that type of heart Okay, for that individual subset. So if if you got it, maybe someone has seen something in you in which you have some sort of uh, caring heart for a certain group. Did you get it? <coughs> Kimmy? I did. Okay. So, it, okay, so when you think pastor, don't think my position. If you want, you can have it. But like, it's, it's uh, that's not that's not what what I'm referring. That's not what it refers to. Okay. All right. Any other ones that you guys don't know what it is, or, or that you're surprised by, that you might have had on your list? No. Everything else is pretty. It's okay. Yeah. You thought evangelism would have been on yours, right? Yeah. And what about yours, Kimmy? Um, I forgot it. <laughs> um, I feel like it's more like giving. Would have been one of yours. Okay. All right. So I get it, right? We 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 definitely have a picture of ourselves in our heads. We do, like we really do. I guess the one that I thought, well, now that you said that, serving for me. Would have been one of yours. Yeah, but maybe because the way in this, that I serve is administration. Could be, yeah. Or for the most part, mm -hmm. yeah. it deals with right. administration, so could that maybe be? Do any of you think or have given the chance oh, no. or the thought <laughs> to say, maybe this is not my gift or this could be my gift? I'll, 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 I'll give you a personal example. Preaching was the last thing I wanted to do. The last thing. Well, preaching was not something that in my heart I ever thought that was something that was something that I was going to develop or try to do on a regular basis like I do here. Because I just <laughs> I didn't want to do that. I was kind of pushed into the situation of preaching, and now that's what I do. Do I believe it's a gift I have? Yes, I do. I believe it's a gift that I have. But it's not a gift that I thought was mine or was something I was going to have. So if there's something on your page that you're like, hmm, I don't know what this is, <clears throat> explore it. Try it. You know, God's funny sometimes. And things that you don't know might be yours could actually end up being yours or a gift that you have. When I first got asked to preach, okay, 
And I think for me, that was a confirmation of this is my gift. It was the very first time I preached was that I, it was a pastor that I was, that I was working with. In the mornings, I would go to my dad's church. And in the afternoon, I would go to his church. But uh, during this month, I was going to my other pastor's church <clears throat> in the morning. And he said, I want you to preach in the morning. One. And I go, okay, give me three weeks at least to prepare for this message. That's what I told him. And I said, and don't tell anyone. Because I don't want anybody to know that I'm going to be preaching. So he gave me three weeks. And he told my mom. Okay? <laughs> and my mom goes, well, you know I'm going to be there. It's your first time preaching, so I'm going to be there. I'm like, fine, just please don't tell anyone. <laughs> she told your dad. And she told my dad. <laughs> and of course my sister found out. Right? And I go, okay, just don't tell no one. <laughs> I don't want nobody there. The church I was going to was small. It was like 10 people. So I'm like, 10 people, why you do? So my mom and dad plan on being there, right? So I go to teach a youth class. And after the youth class, kind of like here, we go into the main service, okay? So I go to the youth class. And when I come out of the youth class, my dad's whole church is there. <laughs> and I look around, I'm like, what the heck? What happened? Like, why is everyone here? Which they were, the churches were an hour away from each other. <laughs> and they said and my dad goes oh the furnace broke at our church so the heater doesn't work so it's too cold so we all decided to come here because plus I told him you were preaching so everybody wanted to come <laughs> so a group of 10 turned into uh, like it was 120 wow I did not want to preach I didn't think that was, it was going to go well at all and it went very well so it wasn't, I didn't want to preach. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do that in front of people. But God brought people. So even though I didn't want to do it, it's like God saying, this is yours. And they kind of went from there. So look at the gifts. Maybe look at the ones on your paper in which you're like, mm, I don't know about this. Or I don't want to do this. Or this is not me. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. And if it's not, you'll know. You'll know that it's not. But make sure that you get a, a confirmation from individuals, from God, and eventually from yourself that you recognize, you know what, that this is mine. I've just been ignoring it, or I just don't want to do it. Okay? So, uh, Ephesians 4. Go to Ephesians 4 with me. Ephesians 4, chapter 4, verse 11. So it says, verse 11 says, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip who? The saints. The saints. My version says his people. For what? For the work of ministry. For works of of the ministry or work of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ listen how important is it to have gifts how important is it to like use the gifts if God gave teachers apostles prophets he gave it for a reason to equip the church so that we can all have a knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. So we get a large or the full understanding, if we can ever get there, to who Christ is and what he did for us and what he came to do for us. So with the gifts that we have, what we're asked to do is to equip people to benefit the church, to better the church. Not for our benefit, but for the benefit of the church. So that we can get a, a good understanding and a grasp of who Jesus is. Until we reach a unity of the faith. So we come to an understanding. Listen, not of these doctrines. But it says a unity of faith of who Jesus is. Paul's worried about that we understand who Jesus is. 
And he says he equips the church. He equips the church so that we can all use our gifts, so that we can all use what we're given, so that God is glorified, so that Jesus is understood. Look, 14. Then we will no longer be what? Children. Infants. Infants. Tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching, by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. If we have a large grasp or a, a good grasp, an understanding of who Jesus is, and you're Jesus-centered, then everything that people teach around us will not affect you. You won't come and go. You will not be affected by what happens. If your feet are planted where it needs to be planted, you will no longer be considered infants. Like waved here and there, what it is that people are teaching, whether it's true or not. 15. Instead, speaking truth in what? Love. In love. We will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head. And that is who? Christ. Christ. Let me read that again. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become, which is the desire that we have, in every respect or every aspect of who we are as a church, the mature body, because we as a church are a body, of Him who is the head, and that is Christ. From Him, the whole body, joined held together by every supporting ligament, grows, it builds itself up in love, up in love as each part does what? So the church builds itself up as long as the parts are working. And together. Together. If the parts aren't working, the church doesn't grow. Let's read that again. From him the whole body, joined, held together by every supporting ligament, it grows and builds itself up as each part does its work. You have been given a gift. You have been given a part to play. Not for your benefit, but for the benefit of the church as a whole to grow. So that God is exalted. That God is glorified. We have gifts. You have been given gifts. Look, uh, let's let's First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter nine. Uh, twelve. Twelve. Uh, verse 4. Actually, let's read verse 1 and then we'll read verse 4. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, and then we'll read verse 4. Now about the gift, says Paul, uh, brothers and sisters, I don't want you to be uninformed. Paul says, I need you to understand what the gifts are. I, I, I need you to be informed as to the spiritual gifts. Verse 4. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but still the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Different gifts, different functions, different parts, one God. One spirit that distributes them. So guys, um, the purpose of this whole gifts thing that we're doing here, that we're doing in this class, that we're doing from the pulpit, that we're teaching. It's not that you can identify a gift and just go about what we've been doing. Or not identify where it is I would be the most functional at. And so we get an idea of where it is you need to be and where it is you need to be working so that we can work the best that we can. Okay. So take a look at your gifts. Find a ministry where you can develop that gift. Where you can develop so we, that we can grow together as a church. So we can become who Christ has asked us to become, who God wants us to be as a church. Okay?
questions, comments? All right, let's pray.